Christian, Heather. That's boring. Read like yes, sir. Sir, I need more time. We have no time. Are you going to give that order or not? Sir, please. You are too naive to see the truth. There's no bringing in born. He has to be put down. He will defend his police officer. Listen to police officers' commands, listen to what we tell you, and just stop. The nation needs to realize that when we tell you to do something, do it. And if you're wrong, if you're right, then the courts will figure it out. We don't get the ticket, we enforce it. But at the end of the day, each and every member can go home safe. Sometimes the use of force is necessary. You need to comply with the police officer the way the system was meant to to be comply with the orders of police officers. Resisting arrest is a real and dangerous crime. Nonpartisan liberty for all. I'm your host, Dave Morn. It is October 6, 2016, and we're coming to you live from Las Vegas, Nevada. Thank you for tuning in to Nonpartisan Liberty for All. We're on weeknights, Tuesday through Thursday, although we've been off the last two nights, so I apologize for that, at least been off live. But um, on the Nonpartisan Liberty for All network, which now runs 24-7, so we've been on. uh, We just haven't been on live uh, the past two nights at a regular time, 7 o'clock Pacific, 10 o'clock Eastern. And you can listen uh, live on Spreaker.com or NonpartisanLibertyForAll.com to the 24-hour stream and, of course, to the live shows. You can also listen to the archives immediately following the show on Spreaker, YouTube, Twitter, uh, SoundCloud, Stitcher, and iTunes. On Nonpartisan Liberty for All, we promote self-ownership and the ideas of true freedom and liberty, meaning being able to do whatever you want as long as you respect the freedom of others and don't directly interfere with their freedom. Exposing government for what it is, a mafia based on extortion that rules without consent by threat of force and violence. And before we get into our topic for today, and I have so many things I want to talk about that I'm not going to talk about today because I'm going to uh, stick to... Uh, our scheduled topic, which is uh, we're going to talk all about this uh, synthetic uh, drug act of 2016, originally 2015, and what's going on with uh, Kratom and how Kratom will end up, I think, being part of this bill, as well as uh, how the media portrays drugs whether they be synthetic drugs or actual drugs, even though the government is really responsible for synthetic drugs, and we'll talk about why. But one of the things I wanted to say uh, after, you know, reading my intro is that people don't see this, and maybe I can come up with a better way of saying it, I'd recommend Larkin Rose to people. Please, if you have any open mind at all about this stuff, and if you're listening, then obviously you do, and you haven't heard Larkin Rose, or you're somebody who agrees with me to an extent or just thinks that there should be less government, definitely check out Larkin Rose. He has a channel on YouTube because he does a much better job of explaining things than I do with his analogies, but I'm, I get to a point where I just, I don't get it, you know, and maybe it's because now there's so much information out there, or maybe it's just because I already know all that information or what, but whether it's taxes and how the government just, takes your money by force and says, we're going to spend it on whatever we want. But if you don't like that, you can vote for this person. And the same thing happens. And people actually believe that their vote means something, that things are going to change. 
I remember listening to people since I was a little kid that, oh, well, if we vote this person in, you know, talking about politics and talking about the people and how if this person gets in there, you know, this is going to happen and this is going to change and this will be better or we, or we need the right people or we need to follow the Constitution or we need this or we need that. And excuse me, I'm <laughs> waiting. You ever like have to burp and can't and I, I, I've been sitting here for like 10 minutes and I hate that feeling. Anyway, um. It used to happen a lot recently, actually, maybe like six months ago, because I drink so much fucking Pepsi, which I've cut way down on. Um, But people don't see that it's the institution of government, that government is sitting there taking a piece of your income without your consent. No one alive today consented to anything. Even most of the people alive back then didn't consent neither. And it's like, okay, we're going to take your money, and at least back you know, when the Constitution went into effect, there wasn't uh, any income taxes at least. But it, there were other taxes and there were other things that went on. So, I mean, to me, this is you know, 240 years in the making. You go back to you know, 1776 and the Declaration of Independence. I know I just fucked up that word, uh, but the whole idea that people just don't fucking get it, and it seems like more people are, but at the same time, I've said this before, so it's like we have some good news and we have some bad news. So we have some good news, uh, more people understand that government robs you extorts you everything is based on force they have no authority to do anything really and they just use force to get you to do everything that they do no matter who's in office it's not the person it's the institution but then on the other side you have a whole bunch of people um that are more and more that just believe what government says and want more government, uh, especially progressives, but the conservatives as well. They want to rule you just like progressives do. Uh, they just have different ways of doing it. So the, this whole idea, you know, conservatives ruin the words freedom and liberty as far as I'm concerned, and that somehow they, they're for freedom because they're for the Constitution, which is just a piece of paper that anybody can violate, but the Constitution doesn't give you freedom neither. And anybody who is against the legalization of drugs, which we'll talk again about uh, again today, um, you can't be for freedom because a simple concept of freedom or one of the concepts that freedom is based on is self-ownership, which I talk about over and over again because it's an easy concept to understand. So even talking about that, it's like I got to talk about it over and over again. But the concept of self-ownership means you can put whatever you want in your body. And it should be an easy concept to understand when you're talking about drugs. And in this case, so we've talked about Kratom. And and just so everybody knows, uh, at least for now, the ban has been postponed. And we'll get into my thoughts on that and what I think is going to ultimately happen, which unfortunately, uh, I, it's going to be banned. It's either going to end up banned at some point, or it's going to end up under the control of doctors. Either way, it's not a positive thing. You know, it's almost worse if it ends up under the control of doctors, to be honest, than if it's just illegal in some ways. So I think that that's ultimately what's going to happen. And and I don't think that this is something where people can say, because some people will, they'll say, oh, look, we have power because we stopped them from doing this. It, there's a couple reasons. I mean, if they really wanted to do it, they would have done it. They want to keep the illusion of freedom. They want to keep that going. And, you know, 
they just don't want the hassle neither. So they want to do it, you know, let let some shit die down and either, you know, kind of backdoor it or do it through this bill that they have. And maybe knowing that they have this bill that we'll talk about and that they can essentially throw it in there. Um, they don't even technically have to throw it in there. They can use this bill. And again, we'll get into that um, to essentially arrest people for selling it or possessing it, which is it's crazy from what I, from what I understand of this bill and I read it. Um, I don't, well, some of it I skimmed through cause it just listed the chemicals, but um, it's, it's a violation, just like everything else. It's a violation of freedom. But my, my point um, is that drugs are the easiest thing to try to explain the concept of, one, self-ownership to people and government's claim on ownership of your body. So you have those two things. You have... The self-ownership aspect, which means, hey, if I own myself, it means a lot of things, obviously. You know, it, it covers prostitution as well because it's your body. You can do what you want with it. But drugs are, are the easiest way to explain it. So it means that you can put whatever you want in your body. It's your body. You own yourself. And the other side of it is if you don't own yourself then the government owns you especially if they're gonna kidnap you and put you in a cage for choosing what to put in your body so the fact that because you could say okay what what are the options of when it comes to ownership well either you own yourself um you could say other people own you which you'd be essentially a slave or a lot of people believe they own their kids, which I don't subscribe to that bullshit. You don't own your fucking kids just because you make a choice to have them. And anybody who has kids has either had them, uh, if it's not by accident and you choose to keep them, (laughs) it's, because you wanted to get something out of it. Now, I I don't look at that as selfish in the sense of, you know, you would think of somebody being a selfish person. But I look at that as you have kids because you want that enjoyment of uh, having them in your life and living vicariously through them and raising somebody and giving your time to somebody else uh, like when somebody volunteers somewhere, um, you know, that type of, of thing. Um, not that I'm uh, equating having kids to volunteering your time, but what I mean is people that have kids have them for all types of reasons, but people that have kids for the positive reasons, it's still selfish in that you get all these things out of it. You know, you get these good feelings out of it. You get the feeling of love and being loved and loving somebody else and, you know, seeing somebody grow up that has your genetics and passing those on and passing other things on and all of that whole shit. But so you don't own your kids. And remember, your kids have no choice. Nobody and which means you had no choice neither. Nobody on this earth made a choice to be here. Nobody. Unless you're an alien and you came from another planet, then you technically made a choice to be on earth, but you didn't make a choice to be, uh, to exist. Unless there's some kind of alien that can somehow do that. So what I'm saying is, is that you don't own your kids and not not only because you get something out of it, but also because your kids didn't choose not only to be here, but they don't choose you as a parent neither. They don't have any choice in who they're related to, who their parents are, or any of that. 
So, uh, you know, that's a whole different conversation, but that's a bunch of bullshit. So there's that. Or the government owns you, which the government believes that they do, and they show that in all the laws that they pass. And I know some people will say, well, it's for the common good. Well, what what do politicians know that you don't know? They're somehow geniuses. They're, uh, they're all a bunch of Einsteins or something. And even Einstein, who know. Who knows how he was socially? I mean, I, I, I'm not an expert on Einstein. Um, you know, different people know different things, but they don't know what's best for people. Now, they think they do, and they want to control people. That's why they run for office in the first place. But the government is obviously saying in this example that we're – giving you and that's why i always go to this example because again it's the easiest one to show that the government's saying you know what not only do we own you we own your fucking body and we can control what you do with your body and we can control it up to the point that we will fucking kill you if you do certain things that we don't want you to do with your body and what sense does that even fucking make So because drugs, in their mind, all drugs are bad for you, if you do drugs and possess drugs with the intention on doing them, and say you have a lot of of them, you know, or a big supply or whatever, we may end up killing you, even though supposedly the whole reason why we made it illegal is because we're trying to protect you, but we just killed you. Just like the police will. Somebody will call the police over being concerned about a relative or a roommate that's going to, they're worried they're going to hurt themselves and the police will show up and kill you. And that's happened a bunch of times. Um, I can name Jesus maybe 10 to 15 times just going through uh, articles and there's so many more. I mean, that's just the ones I went through. So it's something you hear about all the time, especially with mentally ill kids. I remember the the kid that got killed because he had a drill. He was an 18 year old kid that weighed less than a hundred pounds. There were three officers there and they, they killed him. It's just so fucking ridiculous. That's just one example out of, I don't know how many, there was one in Vegas to roommate called the cops there was a girl in California had a supposedly she had a plastic knife, but you know, she was a little skinny girl, 18 years old, had a knife, uh, multiple officers there shot her and killed her. How can you do that? Like, really? That's because you're a fucking pussy and you can't get a knife away from a girl. And supposedly it was a butter knife. Um, but let's say it wasn't. You can't get a knife away from a girl, that many of you? What are you fucking kidding me? I mean, I could understand if she was like an MMA fighter or something. Um, Like the cop that arrested me, who was an MMA fighter, who's actually on... If you go on YouTube and look up uh, Strip Police or Strip PD, uh, he's in a bunch of episodes. He's a douchebag. His name is Joshua Haynes, Officer Joshua Haynes. He has... Fucking dumbass haircut with blonde hair that goes up into a point. So, like, he looks like he has, like, a little mohawk type fucking thing. Um, Anyway, he arrested me for something that wasn't even a crime. That was the one where, if you've listened to the show before, the DA sent me a letter three days later and said, we're not filing charges. Because I didn't do anything. They had no business even coming up to my car in the first place. But anyway, I don't want to waste any more time on that. Um, I want to get more into our topic for tonight. Um, That's why I can't be away. Two days is too long. I feel like, you know, yeah, when I'm away, like one night I actually just overslept. Um, I set my alarm and then, of course, I got up when it went off and then, I laid back down and then I got back up and then it's like fucking eight o'clock. I'm like, shit. 
Um, so it is, you know, one thing I just want to say real quick, people don't know what I go through to do this show. And I, and what I mean is as far as the way people view me and relationships and I'm like an outcast because of, uh, you know, a lot of people don't know I do the show, so it doesn't affect that. But with certain relationships um, where I bring things up, and I'll bring things up everywhere I go. If I go out, which I barely go out, but if I go out, I'll bring it up to people because that's really the only way to get it out there. And like my fiance gets mad. She doesn't want me bringing that shit up if we're out with her friends or something like that because, you know, they want to talk about irrelevant things like, you know, reality shows and stupid shit. They don't want to have intelligent conversations about, you know, what the government's doing and things like that. So there's just a lot of things, I guess, that in general, especially the more listeners I get, and it's been going up, um, the more, and a lot of the listeners, I guess, are listening because they like the show. I'm sure there's people that listen because they don't like it. Cause I would do, I do that too. I listen to shit that I can't stand because I'm like, I can't believe how ridiculous the shit that people are saying on certain shows. Um, but to be that type of person that, you know, is always bringing stuff up or always, um, you know, trying to bring it into a conversation and not in a negative way, but just, you know, making a point or getting people to talk about it. It's, it's hard in a way. You know, and I'm sure if I was single right now that there's probably not a lot of girls that would want to date me based on my opinions. I mean, maybe just casually, but like have a family and all that stuff because of the fact that I believe what I believe and they, you know they think that's fucked up and whatever. So, um, and of course, as I've mentioned, I don't make any money. I don't, you know, um, get anything out of it other than the satisfaction I get in doing the show and getting the message out to people. And yeah, I'd like to, at some point, turn this into a business where I could make what I'm making now, which would be pretty hard to do, just because then I could focus 100% of my time on on this and then work more on articles as well and YouTube videos and all of that stuff. And I could work harder to get that message out. But it's not easy. Um and I'm not I'm not asking for like sympathy or anything like that. Like, oh, feel bad for me. I mean, I made the choice to do the show. I don't have to do the show. I could stop doing it. I could take down all my pages. I mean, I think I've done enough damage to my reputation if I, I don't consider it damage. I consider it, you know, I'm proud of what I, you know, standing up and speaking out. But from the standpoint of that there's enough out there that I couldn't, you know, it's out once it's out on the internet, you know, I couldn't get everything back and uh, somehow change that reputation. And I, and again, I wouldn't want to, I'm just saying, you know, and even jobs, like if I was to look for another job, uh, I think about that too, that if they, you know, search the internet and found some of my shows and stuff like that, that they might not want to hire me because of it. And that's kind of how the government tries to stop people. They try to scare people to speak out. Not, they don't even have to do it themselves. That's what's so fucked up is that 
other people will do it for them, whether it's jobs, whether it's girls, um, in the case of, you know, if you're a heterosexual male, um, or friends in general, I think, got sick of me bringing up all this shit, certain people. So, yeah, it definitely um, affects, uh, has an effect on my life. And I hope people realize that when they listen that it's, you know, I, I put a lot into this. And I'm not asking you, the listener, for anything. I mean, if you want to donate, <laughs> that would be great. But, I mean, you don't have to. That's not a big deal. Really, what I'm asking is just that people keep their minds open, you know, and if it's not even by listening to me, like I said, go to Larkin Rose's channel, listen to his videos, go to, you know, some other, uh, there's not a lot of shows, but there's Free Talk Live, um, there's other stuff on the internet, there's books on a lot of philosophers that had the same type of ideas. So go out there and, you know, do that, uh, read them. Um, but that's really the only thing I ask is that people just, instead of getting mad that they try to keep an open mind, because all I want for people is for them to be able to decide their own life and make their own choices, and have that freedom to do it, and not try to control other people's lives by making laws, and having government threaten them by force. I mean, in a lot of this, it's life and death situations. Every law is based on force. So, You know, when you talk about these things and like the stuff we're going to talk about tonight, it's all based on force. Because if you don't comply, you're going to get killed. And the other option, of course, is is being kidnapped and being in a cage because you have the right as a human being i've said this a bunch of times to put whatever you want in in your system and that's uh, self ownership and if somebody stops you from doing that or grabs you and handcuffs you and puts you in a cage for doing that that's criminal they just kidnapped you for who knows how long i would consider that a political prisoner I know some people would just laugh at that and a political prisoner because they had drugs like on stupid uh, ass Bill O'Reilly show. I remember they talked about cop block once and uh, about some one of the uh, founders getting arrested for uh, cannabis and kind of like laughed about it because he claimed that he was kidnapped or something like that. I forget what it was. But anyway, so let's get to uh, Cray Tom. And, and, and the other thing is, um, you know, a lot of people look at drugs like Cray Tom and mar- marijuana or Cray Tom and cannabis. And I had said they were similar. And just to clarify, because somebody said they're not similar. And what I had said was that they're similar in that they're both plants. And they're both all natural and they can treat things. Now, the effects are different if you take Kratom compared to cannabis. But they're both, the way that they're put together is you grow it. And with uh, Kratom, they, you know, and there's different ways to pronounce it. But that's how I say it because I think it sounds better that way. But they pretty much just grind it up into powder and cannabis, you know, they kind of grind it up, not exactly like Kratom, but they grind it up and smoke it or there's other stuff. There's other ways to consume it. So that's where I said it's similar. And there are a lot of people that will look at those 
and they think cannabis should be legal because, oh, it's not that bad and it's all natural. And and as people learn more about Kratom, they might think the same thing. And many of the people listening now or that listen to my other show that was all about um, Kratom that I did get a lot of listeners, probably the most I've ever gotten, um, may think that way. But they may think that, well, all these other drugs should be illegal. And to me, that's an issue because you're no different than anybody else. The only difference is you think that, okay, well, this drug or this substance isn't as bad, so I think it should be legal. Not that the government doesn't have a right to decide what's good or bad for you, that that's up to you, and that you don't own your body. And some people will say, yeah, I own my body, but drugs should be illegal. So you you just contradict yourself when you say that. But anyway, so... um. It was supposed to be banned on September 30th. Now, from the articles I read, there's some contradictions in that one of them had said that they just didn't file all their paperwork and they the original paperwork was just saying that it was to be banned at that time, you know, assuming it was just a, a notice um to let everybody know that that's what they're planning on doing and that they're still planning on doing it. They just have to file some more paperwork and whatever. And then there's articles that say, well, for now it's ultimately there's a a stop or not a stop to it, but there's a delay that it's it's kind of stopping for right now while they figure things out. Now, what's weird is that, or not weird, but what's kind of funny is that at the same time this is going on, there's a bill in Congress, uh, H.R. Uh, 3537, the, the Synthetic Drugs uh, control act of 2016 it used to be of 2015 but um if and if you go to this website which i should track these more just to see what's going on and i used to to see what congress is up to and they'll do whatever they want anyway so it doesn't matter if they pass a bill for something or not but just to see what they're up to so this passed the house um but this was introduced in september september 17th 17th 2015 and got reported by committee a year later and what happened that got it it waited a year to get to that point i don't know but it was this douchebag uh charles dent from uh pennsylvania's 15th congressional district it hasn't hit the senate yet so right now it's just passed the house but they changed it from 2016 uh, uh from 2015 to 2016 because it was originally introduced in 2015 and it took a year to actually pass and you can think about that and from two different sides you can think like look how long it takes for a bill to even get passed if it's a positive thing um meaning if it's a positive bill, which I don't believe there are any positive bills unless it's a bill that is uh, either protecting a negative freedom or getting rid of something else, that this bill uh, negates this bill, but or this bill uh, abolishes government. But um, what's in this bill kind of relates directly to Kratom, so I don't or Kratom. So I don't know if one of the things they're thinking about is, well, why don't we just wait and see what happens with this bill first? Because from what I understand in this bill, with this bill, and I could be confused. Now we know that Kratom, the people that know about it, we know that it's all natural. We know it's not a synthetic drug. 
but they consider anything that's a substitute for something else a synthetic drug. So they could consider Craze Tom a synthetic uh, painkiller. So they could say it's synthetic for hydrocortone or oxycotton or something like that because they can do whatever they want. And it does, um, when you take big doses, small doses, it's more of a stimulant because it is in the coffee family. But large doses, it does have similar effects to uh, painkillers. And also it helps, and, and this is what has come up, that people were so outraged is that it helped them to get off heroin, painkillers, because it helps with the withdrawal. So what this bill says, first it mentions a whole bunch of chemicals. I don't believe it mentions the chemicals in Kratom, but they could easily add them. But they don't have to because from what I understand from this bill, it covers anything that is a synthetic version of another drug. Meaning that because before what was happening was every time they banned a chemical or a a specific substance, they'd come up with something else. So they're justifying this, which is ridiculous, because how can you say something's illegal but not really have it as illegal? So what they're going to say is, well, this, we believe, was created as a synthetic version of this drug, so it's illegal, even though it's never been deemed illegal or the chemicals have never been deemed illegal it's illegal, you're under arrest, the place that sold it's under arrest, and all of this shit. So one thing it's going to do, it's going to scare people into not selling any of this stuff, first of all, if this bill passes. That anything synthetic, they're not, or even close, like like I said, like Kratom is not synthetic, but that's what they're going to call it, and they're going to be scared to sell it. At least, like, smoke shops. Now, websites they might say fuck the government and continue to sell it until it actually is on the DEA list or something like that specifically, which I hope they do that, that they continue to sell it. And I know they're, they're selling it now, at least one of the websites, the website that I uh, went to before is selling it. I don't know about the smoke shops. I bet you most of them ha- said fuck it because there have been smoke shops that have been raided for like bath salts or synthetic marijuana that weren't even selling it anymore. That stop had stopped selling it and then they still got raided for it and they stole their cash. There's video of it in uh one of the ones in New Hampshire. Uh the host of Free Talk Live actually filmed them doing it. And they had they didn't have any. They had stopped selling it when they were told it was illegal. So essentially, the DEA is going to have a bill that's going to allow them to go after anything that they deem is similar to something else. So it gives them that discretion. And again, that's the way I understand it. Um, I could have that wrong, but I don't believe I do. And if you go to us, uh, or govtrack.us, it's HR 3537, the dangerous synthetic drug control act of 2016. You can read the bill. You can look at the summary, um, you know, it does add certain specific substances, but it also has a portion that um, here it's a, well it says I'll just read this summary part. It doesn't mean it actually have it has it in it because I'm trying to read it while I'm talking and it it's hard for me to understand it. So it says the bill amends the Controlled Substances Act to modify the definition of controlled substance 
analog to mean a substance that has a similar previous substantially similar chemical structure and pharmacological effect to a Schedule One controlled substance. So that's the part where basically that's what it's saying. It, it If it has a similar chemical structure and sim- similar effects, but that is up to the discretion of the government law enforcement mainly, and then, of course, the prosecutors and the judges, which are just going to go along with it. So something like Kratom, if this bill is passed, let's say, and they don't put it on a schedule, they don't schedule one Kratom. Let's say they they say, fuck it, we're not going to do that. But they pass this bill. Now, even though it is not a synthetic drug and the chemical compounds are not, similar to say heroin although heroin is a plant it's more similar to coffee they could use this bill to go after people possessing or using kratom or selling it because that's why they write these bills these open-ended and we've talked about this on the show before the business of laws where they have Uh, open-ended bills and of course that's why everyone has to hire a lawyer they make any every bill very complicated and hard to understand with the legal ease and all that bullshit so yeah it's it's essentially going to get people arrested that don't even know they're doing something illegal because it's not going to list something specifically as illegal And so I guess my theories on Kratom is, one, it is just a delay. They're, uh, you know, kind of dealing with the protest and all the calls and all of that. And there's some Congress people who got involved because they didn't want to... um, You know... They wanted to act like they're doing something for their constituents when they really don't give a fuck. It's the illusion of freedom. Oh, yeah, if you call your Congress people. Well, a lot of people actually did get involved in this, but they want to show like they're doing something and whatever. So you could have them doing it. At the same time, though, they're passing a bill like this. So it's like... It shows they're they're hypocrites. They're full of shit. So um, they could just go through and end up, you know, delaying it for a little longer. And that's a possibility. They could have, you know, delay it and do tests on it, give it to doctors to control, which may be even worse. Because th- this is a problem for f- for the government is that they want to be able to control all of this. If a drug is legal or semi-legal or prescriptions can be written for it, they want to control it. And they control it through the doctors. So they want to know if you're going to rehab. They don't want people self-medicating themselves. They don't want people getting off of drugs using... Uh, because that's exactly what the fucking... <laughs> Rehabs do exactly the same thing. They just use like Subutex or uh, what's the other one? I think morphine. I was watching something last, was it last night or Sunday night uh, where a girl was going to get her, maybe it was yesterday, I don't know. But they were going to the clinic to get whatever they they got. I think it was Subutex or something. But they had talked about, you know, they give Subutex or morphine or whatever. So maybe they give some people Kratom now. But why do you have to go through that whole process? You have to go to the doctor to do it. You got to pay money. Or I guess what I was watching was in Canada, so they didn't have to pay money. But you got to have it be overseen uh, like a parent, like you're a little kid, and it has to be overseen by a doctor as opposed to there's plenty of people that can do it on their own, and that's what they're doing right now. 
And there's a lot of those people that they don't want anyone to know, especially with the tracking of information. They don't want to know uh, people to know that they had a problem with a drug. They don't want it there to be a record of it. They don't want any of that shit. And they shouldn't have to. It's their right to take what they want. So essentially that's a possibility that it could end up, you know, as that type of drug where you need a prescription for it's like a schedule two or something like that. And they do use it. Although pharmaceutical companies wouldn't make any money off it. So why go through that process? Why not just use what they're doing now and ban it? And of course, the third thing that's a possibility is just this bill getting passed and then they can use this bill to stop it, which I think is the way they'd like to do it because then it's almost like no one's going to know about this bill and they can do it more secretly. And then people are just going to be, they're going to get more arrest out of it because people aren't even going to know. And it's just, it's a fucked up way of doing it. So I see that more than anything. I do not see it just being delayed indefinitely and staying the way it is, which it is how it should be. N- nothing should happen. It should stay the way it is and that's it. And not only that, every other fucking drug should be legal. But the reason and Kratom to me doesn't fall into this category because no one's OD'd off it. Like I said, it's it's like marijuana in the sense of how it's a nat- all natural plant that nobody's OD'd off of. That's another uh, commonality with cannabis is that you can't OD. You can take as much as you want. It might make you sick to your stomach, but it's not gonna it's not gonna kill you. So it it has those uh, common properties with marijuana. So. And it also has the common properties that you don't need, you know, of course, um, the government. And it's a plant, so you don't need, it's totally all naturally a plant. You don't have to do anything to it to get chemicals out. So you don't need pharmaceutical companies to do anything. It's just the fact that it grows mostly in East Asia. Whether you can grow it here or not, I had mentioned that I'm sure with the technology that there are people that could probably grow it. Um, cannabis, you know, grows naturally in like California. So it's different, but that doesn't mean that, uh, Kratom can't grow in California or Florida or, uh, even, even Southern Nevada, although it does get kind of hot, but it doesn't mean that it can't. So I honestly don't know enough about you know, growing plants and all of that shit. But it's something that people could do on their own is my point where they don't need a pharmaceutical company and chemist or, you know, even if they're ghetto chemists to do anything to it. And the government, of course, doesn't like that because the less control they have. That's what this is all about. It's all about control. Now, those people that, you know, just listen to the other show because it was about Kratom. And I'm sure there's plenty of them because I got so many damn listens. And of course, you know, that's not the amount of listens I get to every show, not even close. So a lot of people just listen because it had to do with Kratom. And I'm sure a lot of those people still think um, that most of the other drugs should be legal, but well, this isn't bad, so this shouldn't be. Um, illegal. I mean, that they think most of the other drugs should be illegal, but they don't think Kratom should be illegal or cannabis should be illegal. Um, But that is where if you think that 
Kratom and cannabis should be legal, no matter what your rationale, if it's because you think they're safe drugs, you got to realize that this is about control. The reason why a lot of drug, all these drugs that are illegal are illegal have nothing to do with protecting people and keeping them safe. Nothing. Do you know why heroin became illegal in the first place? They were putting it in like cough medicine and it said heroin on it. It was because they thought that they passed a law initially in San Francisco that all the Chinese uh, coming over were going to rape white women, uh, get them high off heroin or opiates and rape them. And I think it was the same thing with cannabis and cocaine where black men were going to you know, rape white women after they got them high on cocaine and marijuana. I mean, these laws didn't come out of being worried about the people or the public or trying to keep them safe. For one, that's none of the government's business. I don't believe that it's the government's job to keep people safe. Now, you could say, well, that's just my belief. But It's not just my belief. It's natural law that you have the right to put what you want in your body, that you own yourself, that it's your responsibility to keep yourself safe. Although the government doesn't do anything to keep you safe. The police don't keep you safe. They show up after the fact. They get you vengeance. They get you revenge. They don't keep you safe. Yeah, occasionally they might stop something in the middle, but that's just by fucking coincidence. So what I'm saying is if you believe that Kratom should be legal and you believe that cannabis should be legal, you should believe that all drugs should be legal. Now, I hate saying you should... I, I telling people how to think. I, I it bothers me saying that. Um, but I can't think of another way to say it. But it's the same motivation of the government. They're going after it for the same reasons. Whether it's pharmaceutical companies not being able to make enough money whether it's just control of what you can do, whether it's the, and these are all reasons, whether it's the police and their budget and being able to arrest more people and, and, and find more people and keep the business of laws going and all of these things and all of these reasons why drugs are illegal. None of them have anything to do with trying to keep somebody safe. And we'll get into the propaganda from the media because it's ridiculous. You would think, and this is why I think guns and drugs are so related, because they make them sound the same. Like, you would think that drugs are going around um, just jumping in in people's mouths or injecting people automatically by themselves, that the people don't do it, or that drug dealers were doing it. And the same thing with guns, like guns are just shooting people on their own. It's not like people are are shooting people. So I would keep on, I, I guess, for the people that are, you know, protesting and doing what they're doing, I ultimately, in the end, don't think it's going to stop anything, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. So if you feel that that's what you should do and, you know, whatever you've been doing, whether you've been calling your congressman or protesting or whatever, continue to do that. And also look up this other bill because that's another way they can go after it. And they'll probably say, Oh no, that's not, we couldn't use this bill, but I believe they could easily use this bill to go after it. Now, you can go and read it and, you know, decide for yourself. But I would tell 
if you're uh, the type of person that's out there, you know, protesting or calling your congressman or whatever, I would also tell them that you're against this bill, this H.R. 3537, the Synthetic Drug Control Act, because it's not only something that is banning specific substances, it's also giving them power to ban something without going through any process first. It's giving them discretion to say, well, this is like this, so this is illegal. And more people will get arrested or kidnapped because that's what it it is. And you think of all these synthetic drugs. Why do you think these synthetic drugs exist? And again, Cray Tom, I, I take out of it because I don't think that it's a synthetic drug. However, I do think that more people uh, do it because it's illegal. But also, if you do research on it, you find out that it's all natural and stuff like that. So I think people have gotten to the point where it's not just about it being legal. It's also about it being all natural. So, but if opiates and painkillers and all of this other stuff were legal would people ever have gone looking for something like kratom to use and maybe they would have i i don't know uh i don't know if it would have gotten as big as it is but maybe and i think that's a positive thing i don't get me wrong i think uh it the fact that it's all natural is a positive thing and i think that the fact that it's legal, at least for now, is also a, a very positive thing. Of course, I think all drugs should be legal. But taking Kratom out of the equation, all these other synthetic drugs, which I think are dangerous. I don't think Kratom's dangerous at all compared to anything. It's not a, you know, it's... When it comes to a danger scale, I think it's on the same level as marijuana or cannabis or even less where you can't OD on it. It's not mixed with other chemicals. It's not dangerous as far as I see it. But a lot of these other synthetic drugs are dangerous and a lot of times more dangerous than the actuals that are legal the or originals or whatever but the reason for that and i think this is by design is the fact that all these other drugs are illegal because people went looking for legal ways to get high and get the same high they were getting from other things So how can, you know, government realizes that they're not fucking, I mean, they're stupid, but they're not as stupid as we think they are. They know exactly what they're doing. They know exactly why these are being created. And then they twist the whole thing around and they have their government media go out and give all the bullshit on it. Whether it's in a TV show, whether it's in a documentary, and I've been watching so many drug documentaries, it ain't even funny. I actually enjoy watching them, although a lot of times they piss me off because of the the um, propaganda that they put in there. Like they have police saying uh, stuff like, oh, they're ruining our city, these drug deal, Like, you know, the shit they used to say in the 80s, they're still saying that it's the drug dealers now the drug dealers that are killing people yeah but the majority of people that sell drugs do not kill people that's something they want you to think that drugs brings crime it does bring a certain amount of crime at certain levels like you look at the mexican cartels but in general there's a lot more people that sell drugs the majority of people where there's no violence involved. And if you want to get rid of the violence, then you make it illegal. I mean, you make it legal. You don't see, and somebody had said something like this, it might have been Chris Rock. I mean, you don't see a Bud Light 
you know, fucking doing drive-bys on Miller Lite. So I'm going to take a brief break and play some uh, related clips. And when we come back, we'll talk more about the bill and we'll talk about the media and how it's not only covered synthetic drugs in general and what's going on with Kratom, but how it covers just drugs or things that are considered drugs. I don't even like the word drugs anymore. Even that is a it it it's a negative term because it means something like they don't call Tylenol drugs or I guess some people do, but most of the stuff that are legal they don't call drugs. But if it's illegal, they do call it drugs. And we'll we'll talk a little more about the um propaganda regarding why a lot of these things are are so bad and how making them legal on so many fronts would get rid of so, uh, so many problems that you'd really take your problems with drugs and you'd minimize them very low and then the people you'd still have people that would have drug problems, but you totally minimize the people that have drug problems because I define a drug problem as something that is interfering with your life. If you can't work or get to work or you're having problems within your relationships or if if doing drugs is fucking up your life, you have a problem. If it's not, then you don't. Or if you're paying a bunch of money. And that would eliminate that problem if they were legal. If you're getting arrested all the time, of course, again, that would eliminate that problem if they were legal. So the people that their only problems are money and the police, they don't have any problems if drugs are legal. So we'll, we'll get, um, to all those things and more uh, when we come back. And I forgot to, at the beginning of the show, mention the number. Of course, we're always happy to hear from you. You can call us via phone at 702-470-7664. That's 702-470-7664. Or you can call us via Skype, username, nonpartisan, Liberty for All. Just send a contact request. Of course, I, I never mentioned this, but I should... There is a chat room, uh, so if anybody wants to ask a question via chat, uh, if you're too nervous to uh, call in or get on or be on the, the radio, not like there's that many listeners anyway, but if you're you know too nervous to do that, you can always uh, just send a message via the chat room. And I will address your comment or question on the air. So we will be right back after this. Oh, and of course, uh, check us out at nonpartisanlibertyforall.com where you can find various articles, archives. Uh, if you forget the phone number or want to contact us, all that information is there as well. There's pictures. There's pictures of my bruises from the police if you want to look at those and more. So uh, just uh, check us out there. So we'll be right back after this nonpartisan liberty for all dot com. Off the streets and off the shelves, a local congressman is pushing for a law to make all synthetic drugs illegal. It comes after overdoses, overloaded emergency rooms up and down the East Coast and here in the Lehigh Valley. Congressman Charlie Dent introduced his bill today in Washington. WFMZ's Jamie Stover is in the newsroom with more on the proposal. Jamie? Robin Wendy, Congressman Charlie Dent says this will help get drugs off the streets because it will remove the gray area in current legislation that makes it tough to prosecute those who manufacture and deliver synthetic drugs. It's an imperative that we restructure the law uh, so that the DEA, the Drug Enforcement Agency, and the FDA have additional authorities uh, to go after this poison and remove this 
uh, from the street. Congressman Charlie Dent says the Synthetic Drug Control Act classifies more than 200 synthetic drugs as so-called Schedule I substances. Those are drugs deemed dangerous and addictive under the Controlled Substances Act. The bill would also lessen the burden of proof for prosecutors, and Dent says it revamps an outdated 2012 law. Our bill would uh, you know, essentially allow prosecutors to, pro to prove only that the drug in question is similar in terms of chemical structure or narcotic effect. See, there you go. And that's what I had said, that they only have to prove that it's similar. They don't have to prove it has a, a certain chemical. They don't have to prove anything. So basically what they have to prove is that it gives a similar effect. So right there, Kratom, even though it's a natural, all-natural plant that is safer than probably any drug I can think of, um, probably safer than like acetaminophen, uh, but they will be able to say, hey, this is synthetic for painkillers so, or heroin. I think that's really stretching it, but they can do whatever the fuck they want. So they could say it's it's the equivalent or they could find some other schedule one drug that has opium in it and say that it's similar to that and then just arrest people for it. So is that their plan or not? I don't know. And maybe that's what they're trying to figure out right now as far as how they want to approach uh, this. And this is from a year ago, actually. So, again, it took them a year to, as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, to actually get this bill through. However, once it got to, uh, I have this schedule here somewhere. Once it got through committee, let me get back sorry, to the list. It lists like the dates and it has a history. So it has when it was introduced. It was reported by committee the 21st. It got passed to 26. So that took five days. However, it was introduced in September 17th, 2015. So it took a year to get to reported by committee. It took five days to go from reported by committee to passed passing the house now what was it that sped that up because during that same time you had i think it was on august 30th or september 1st right around there um i believe maybe august 30th that they had uh, announced made the amount announcement on kratom so at during that same time or at least two weeks later this bill you know gets reported to committee so I don't know if that's just coincidence, which I seriously doubt it is, or it's there's a reason behind it. Synthetic drugs sold legally under names like K2 and Spice came in a deadly wave this year, including eight deaths here in the Lehigh Valley this spring. We've been extremely busy this year, um, <clears throat> not only with investigations, but with autopsies. Last month, Lehigh County Coroner Scott Grimm told us he expects more than 120 overdose autopsies this year. Last year, he investigated 84. The hospitals were overloaded, too, and police were overwhelmed. Many of the people that you do arrest, uh, when you do arrest them, they're in that very aggressive state. Swinging, hitting, kicking, um, up to spitting. Dent says it's time to do something about it. We really need to protect people. That's why we're doing this. Now, this bill specifically targets the dealer, not the user. And Den says he has strong bipartisan support for this legislation. It will now head to a House committee for review. In the newsroom, Jamie Stover, 69 News. Thank you, Jamie. Tonight, the DEA saying there's no timeline of when the controversial herb Kratom will be banned. Initially, the Drug Enforcement Agency announced September 30th as the day it intended to make Kratom illegal. Michelle Casada is live now in the newsroom with what effect the DEA's intent is having on those pro and anti Kratom. Michelle? Kelly, several online Kratom vendors have these notices up saying their stock is limited and their future sales uncertain. Now, as you can see, several of these products are out of stock, and this is concerning both Kratom supporters and Kratom critics. I usually feel 
the pain going away in about 20 minutes. Hugh Hamilton makes his own Kratom capsules. He's been using the controversial herb for three years. It alleviated the, my um, sciatica symptoms. But the Drug Enforcement Agency calls Kratom an imminent hazard to public safety, a notion Hamilton says is ridiculous. It's a leaf. It's in the coffee family. But it's not just a leaf to Kratom critics. Two years ago, Linda Mautner lost her son, Ian Mautner, to what she calls a substance-induced suicide. They keep bringing that up. I played the fucking story, okay? This happened in Florida. And this fucking bitch who now wants to be this crusader, okay? I'm sorry your son died, but I'm not going to sit there and not call you a bitch because your son died. Her son was taking fucking a bunch of shit for depression, and he also took uh, Kratom, and because of that, oh, it, it was a Kratom, and she blames that. Maybe if he wasn't taking a bunch of shit for depression, probably SSRIs, he'd still be alive. So that there's no validity in this fucking bullshit. That's what they use because they have nothing else to use because no one's dying over it because it's not dangerous. She says he had been addicted to Kratom for three years. He started in the summer of 2011, right before his senior year, and he was gone in 2014. She understands that people... Really, three years. So he took it for three years, and and he didn't commit suicide till three fucking years later, too. You know, leave out the rest of the story, though. Like Hamilton, used the herb for pain relief, but is concerned about where the kratom powder mixes are coming from and what's in them. Are you trusting the hands that that's going through? I mean, this can be laced, as we know there's like so many drugs out there now. Hamilton says he is all for regulation, but doesn't want the DEA to make the herb illegal. In August, the agency announced plans to list Kratom as a Schedule One controlled substance in the same group as heroin. When it will happen is still unknown. One minute I'm elated about the DEA banning it, making it a Schedule One, and then the next minute it's like, well, it's going to be delayed. Wait, did she just, this is reporting. She just said she doesn't want it banned. She just wants um, something to know what people are getting. And then she just says, oh, they're banning it. I'm elated. Then they change it. Now I'm whatever. The DEA says it's not a question of if Kratom will be banned, but when. The agency is still working on. And they still haven't mentioned yet. I thought they did, but they still haven't mentioned that her son was on antidepressants. Paperwork needed to be filed for that final order. Our local law enforcement agencies say they're waiting on instructions from their federal partners. Reporting live in the newsroom, Michelle yeah, Cassata, so WPTV News Channel 5. They don't mention at all. He's recognized. I was just uh, seeing if, if they did end up uh, mentioning it. But yeah, they don't mention at all that her son was on antidepressants. Now, they did... In the other story that was uh, from like a couple years ago, and she became one of those fucking crusaders to try to ban it. It's like just because your son couldn't handle something and he was on other shit that was probably the cause of his death. And I I know I probably sound like I'm unsympathetic to his death and that I'm an uncaring person and whatever. And that's not the case, but... People can think whatever they want. But so your son dies. Not only do you want to blame it on something, because, of course, you have to find something to blame it on. Maybe you are a fucked up parent. I don't know. Um, But you don't mention the fact that he was on most likely SSRIs and how they give those out like candy. But everything else is is bad for you but those are great and who knows what the fuck is in those they haven't even been around long enough to really see what the effect over time is i mean things like opium have been around for hundreds of years here i yield as much time as he may consume to uh mr dent from pennsylvania the gentleman from pennsylvania is recognized uh thank you mr speaker and thank you for yielding uh i'd like to thank chairman upton and ranking member pallone uh, Mr. Guthrie, Katko, Mr. Himes, Eleanor Holmes Norton, and Congressman Jolly, all, all for helping to bring this bipartisan bill up today in order to, uh, to officially identify these dangerous uh, synthetic substances and address the public health crisis 
uh, present, uh, presented by their continued proliferation throughout the country. Uh, I've been working for several years to bring attention uh, to the very serious threat that synthetic drugs pose to the health and safety of communities both within Pennsylvania and across our nation. Although initially successful after placing a number of synthetic cannabinoids on Schedule I and enhancing the DEA's authorities to protect the public uh, from these drugs through legislation that was signed into law in 2012. The DEA protect the public. The DEA who has probably killed more, way more people than Kratom or synthetic drugs have killed. Uh, we've begun to see a renewed rise in both the... He's recognized. And, uh, and I'm talking about... Uh, Mr. Depp from Pennsylvania. The gentleman. I'm talking about innocent people. Uh, when they, if you read Radley Balco's book, uh, which I strongly recommend, and you can read about all the fucking people that they killed uh, by accident or went to the wrong house or, you know, kids that they killed or like, uh, this was recently the uh, flash bang grenade they threw into a fucking baby's crib over somebody selling a 50 bag of, um, what was it, meth or something? It's just, it's ridiculous. The public health crisis uh, present, uh, presented by their continued proliferation throughout the country. Uh, I've been working for several years to bring attention uh, to the very serious threat that synthetic drugs pose to the health and safety of communities both within Pennsylvania and across our nation. Because you're a Although fucking douchebag congressman. Placing a number of synthetic cannabinoids on Schedule One and enhancing the DEA's authorities to protect the public uh, from these drugs through legislation that was signed into law in 2012, uh, we've begun to see a renewed rise in both the number of new substances on the streets and the number of victims affected by these products. Uh, this bill simply adds 22 compounds to Schedule One uh, of the Controlled Substance Act, and these are, frankly, the very worst of the worst compounds out there. Uh, the products targeted by this bill are primarily labeled as uh, synthetic marijuana, uh, bath salts, or synthetic opioids, uh, which are sold under the labels like uh, K2, Spice, Flaca, uh, that allow them to be marketed to unsuspecting young people and some of the most vulnerable members of our society. Uh, through modifications to the chemical formulas of these drugs, uh, their overseas manufacturers uh, have been able to continue to push them on the victims under the false impression uh, that they are safe, despite often being uh, more potent than the drug. I'm, I'm sorry. They've been able to push them on the victims. Now, th this fucking shit, it's just such bullshit to me. I'm I'm sorry. Because if you're going to sit there and tell me that people that make a choice to do a fucking drug are victims of who? Of themselves? Uh, that drug dealers are the ones that are the bad people and these people are victims of drug dealers. What about all the obese people and people that die of heart attacks, which account for uh, 500,000 deaths every year? and are up there with cancer as the number one cause of death. Is McDonald's, uh, are they food dealers that should be fucking, uh, you know, arrested and put in jail? Because more people die of, of heart attacks, a lot more people, it's not even close, than die of, of any type of drug. And if you didn't make all these other drugs... Uh, that were safer or at least would be safer if they were made by a, um, you know, actual company, uh, a pharmaceutical company with a chemist, or it doesn't have to be a pharmaceutical company, but a company with a legitimate uh, business and a legitimate uh, chemist that was putting the stuff together for one, you wouldn't have the synthetics because they'd just be making the real thing and people would be buying those and it would be a lot safer among all these other things, which I'll get to when we get back. But it, that just fucking pissed me off. Drugs, they're designed to mimic uh, without action. Uh, like the step we're taking here today to pass this critical bill and designate these substances as dangerous and abusive products that they are, uh, we will continue I think I you're fucking more dangerous. Victims, more victims. And you're, you and the fucking government are dangerous. You're fucking 
under the threat of force, you're robbing people, among other things. You're kidnapping people. The real fucking dangerous criminals, the dangerous gangs, are fucking Congress and the president and all his fucking agencies. And the police, of course, who carry out the dirty work of all the politicians. And sadly, uh, more deaths. Uh, Just this month, uh, there was a gruesome killing in my district that was fueled by uh, by the ingestion of the synthetic drug known as uh, Flaca, absolutely gruesome. My friend Congressman Himes can talk of a, a situation very close to him, too, uh, where there's a tragedy. Uh, unfortunately, uh, data from our health centers, law enforcement ent- entities, and poison control offices show that such cases have become... Really? Well, my father gruesomely died of... Uh cancer that he got from smoking cigarettes but cigarettes still seem to be legal even though i don't know what percentage of people that smoke for a certain amount of time get cancer because you don't give a fuck about people's lives and i don't think cigarettes should be banned neither they should be legal it was his choice to smoke fucking cigarettes which was stupid but You know, you pick and choose because you have agendas and everything is based off of them. And none of those agendas have to do with, well, we care about people. And you know what? It's not your fucking job, man, to tell people how to live their lives. We got to keep people safe. But some people buy into this fucking bullshit. more and more prevalent around the country, and I applaud this proactive action to stop uh, further proliferation. I should note that when we passed the law in 2012, we did shut down so much of these synthetic drugs that were being sold. We shut it down, Uh, but these folks overseas have figured out ways to to reformulate these compounds, and this problem is back with us again. We had shut it down, but it's back with us, and this is a step that we're taking. And so, um, again, I'd also like to thank all these a bipartisan co-sponsors, uh, you know, for their partnership in this effort and their commitment to work together to address uh, this public health epidemic by getting these dangerous substances off the streets. Uh, finally, and I also just like to mention one other thing too, that this bill has gone through an extensive regular order process. Uh, there's been a hearing, subcommittee markup, full committee uh, markup, uh, and the bill is the result of negotiations uh, between the DEA, researchers, and many others. Uh, organizations like the American Hospital Association, American College of uh, Emergency Room Physicians, Fraternal Order Police, uh, the National Associations of Convenience uh, Of course, Stores, the police uh, former special agents gives the them FBI, more to do, more uh, money to support get. support and endorse this bill. So finally, I urge my colleagues to support passage of this important legislation today so that we can save lives. And I'll continue my efforts to educate yeah, the public fuck. about the dangers of these synthetic drugs. Fuck you. Our communities. This time I reserve. I reserve the balance of my time. Impact segment tonight, giving up the war on drugs. Some Americans want to do it. And in Canada, the another fucking douchebag, Bill O'Reilly. Situation has reached a level of absurdity. In Vancouver, perhaps the most permissive drug city in North America, you can now get a crack pipe for 25 cents. A not-for-profit organization has installed crack pipe vending machines in Vancouver's troubled downtown east side neighborhood. The Portland Hotel Society is operating a pair of the machines which dispense Pyrex glass pipes for 25 cents apiece. Many programs provide pipes for drug users, but generally on a one pipe per person per day basis. The group says allowing users to buy as many pipes as they want will curb the spread of disease as fewer pipes will be reused. With the legalization of marijuana in Washington State and Colorado, can crack pipe vending machines here be far behind? Joining us once again from Washington, Charles Krautheimer. So there's a lot of things in play here with this drug war deal. I mean, there's the criminality of it. There's the addiction quotient. Uh, We just saw Philip seem... Bill, you fucking retard. Uh, The drug war was lost uh, probably before it started. People can get drugs in prison. You know, if you can get drugs in prison, enough said. Or hop and kill himself with heroin 
there's a permissive atmosphere in cities like Vancouver and Amsterdam, Holland and Portugal. How do you see it? You know, that's a hotel in Vancouver. You really want to check in with the family, isn't it? No. I mean, uh, it, and it's disgusting. If but you've that's been, the point. Vancouver's a beautiful town. Have you been? No. It's beautiful. And this drug culture there has ruined the downtown. Then don't fucking go there, you douchebag. Area. Just as it did in Zurich, Switzerland. Go. But that's the point. It's precisely because you wouldn't want to check into that hotel. And you wouldn't want to hang out in that neighborhood. And you wouldn't want to live in Zurich or even in Amsterdam where they've had needle exchange programs. Because they don't work. And they kill people in the end. You know, it looks like compassion. I can understand the motives. But when you're dealing with drugs of this kind, and we, we saw what it did to Hoffman. We, we've seen what it's done to a whole array of celebrities and non-celebrities. This stuff kills. It kills slowly. It kills quickly. And what a society has to do, despite the fact that it causes the corruption, it causes huge expense, it causes hypocrisy, it enriches the drug lords. You've got to admit all the negatives of the war on drugs. Again, dumbass. That's because it's illegal. You wouldn't have a drug lord if it was legal. You wouldn't have the crime. You wouldn't have all of these things. They love to take how things are now and then say, well, if you legalize them and not realize that a whole bunch of things would change, a whole bunch of things would change. It's just like with the government. It's, I, I don't know. I'll play the rest of this and I'll shut up. Nonetheless, it keeps the number of people who suffer lower than it ordinarily would be. But the, the ploys, argument against your philosophy is harm okay. reduction. I'm sure you've heard that. Harm reduction. This is being led by the New York Times and other liberal media organs. That the U.S. prisons are full of people on uh, drug wraps. So if you legalize the whole thing and regulate it, number one, the state gets more money in taxation. Number two, you take the criminality out of a drug use, even though it's an addictive force. You have 10 percent of the population addicted to alcohol. So the liberals don't seem to think that that's a bad thing to add to that because that's what would happen. And, and then children would just be devastated. But, it, but it's an overall message to the society that do what you want. Do what you want. We'll let you do whatever you want. Exactly, you fucking moron. You actually get it. Yeah, it's a message. Do what you want. Because it's your life, you motherfucker. This fucking... I mean, it, it, at least he got that. It's a message. Do what you want. We don't care. Do what you want. That's right. You know what? That's the whole point of life, to do what you want. Now, it doesn't mean go and do drugs. And you know what? If drugs were legal after, I, I, I don't know, this is a rough estimate. I mean, even in Colorado, the usage uh, uh, has gone down. Um, but if drugs were legal, you'd have probably in 10 years there wouldn't even be anything referred to as a drug problem. Um, you know, there'd still be some people with drug problems, but my point being is that it would be so small that it would be a non-issue. It would rarely even be talked about. If somebody had a problem, they'd go get some help, and that would be it. But... Bill O'Reilly doesn't believe in freedom. Now, it, again, of course, if you attack somebody or you kill somebody or rape somebody or anything like that, if you interfere with their freedom, no, you can't do that. That's interfering with somebody else's freedom. That's violating somebody else's freedom. That's violating natural law. You don't have the right to do that. But as long as you don't, violate others freedoms yeah it is do what you want it's your life it is not the life of the government you motherfucker and i apologize for people that maybe this is their first time listening to the show 
But my frustration level of these fucking morons, and it's not just with drugs, it's with all of it. It's with taxes. It's with the police being able to do whatever they want. It's with all of it. I'm I'm tired of it. And luckily I have a radio show where I can vent and and uh when I need to yell about something, I can yell about something cuz usually I don't. I'm not somebody you know occasionally I will, but for the most part I don't get on the air and start yelling and screaming and whatever because that's I don't think that that's productive. It might be entertaining the people, you know, like there's some uh, radio hosts out there that want to yell and call people racist names and just scream through their whole show. But uh, because it gets them listeners, but I'm not about doing gimmicks or whatever to get listeners. I'm about promoting the ideas of freedom and the truth about what government is because it is the truth. That's the one thing, you know, I was talking to my fiance last night and the one thing that I I mentioned is the one thing that I got on everybody else, not just me, but anybody who believes in true freedom and liberty. And I always say true freedom and liberty because of the conservatives uh, bastardization of the words freedom and liberty. But the one thing that we got on the conservatives, on the progressives, on all of them is the truth. And not having an agenda. And I know people could say, well, of course you have an agenda. You have an agenda of freedom. But how is that an agenda that I want everybody to be free. I don't have an agenda that just benefits a party or a a political candidate or even myself. I want people to be free to choose to do what they want in their own lives. It's your life. If you want to throw it away, That's your right, too. It is. I know it's sad and whatever. You know, your life does not belong to anybody else. And I know some parents disagree, as we uh, spoke about earlier. But your life does not belong to your parents. It doesn't belong to your friends. It doesn't belong to your husband or wife. It doesn't even belong to your kids, although... I would say the moral thing to do when you have kids is to not do certain things and to make certain sacrifices for your kids. But that's only a moral obligation um, as long as, you know, you don't beat them. Well, of course, it falls into, you know, respecting their freedom as well, which is not beating them and not, you know, um, directly abusing their freedom. And, of course, feeding them and clothing them. But what I mean is, is that you still, you know, if you don't want to have kids, don't have kids. If you have kids and you don't want them, nobody, you know, this sounds fucked up, but, you know, people can give their kids up for adoption. They could give their kids to their parents or other relatives. Um, And people have done that. Now, I don't think that's the morally the right thing to do if you choose to have a kid. Now, if it's an accident, you give it up for adoption, you know, that's fine. Or have an abortion, um, I think that's fine as well. I think that's, in a lot of situations, what people should have done. But it's their life when it comes to that, too. Um But my point being is that they don't own you neither, nor do you own them. So, yeah, that's the point, 
It's your life to do with it what you want. It is not the government's life. Although with everything they're doing, and I just did a a two-part show last week about it, about everything the government's doing to control people's lives and they're moving forward and more and more laws and more restrictions and all of these things because they have their agenda where they want to control every aspect of your life and do what they want to do. You're already collateral on the debt. So the point being is that it's not the government's life. It's not collectively society's life neither. I'm sorry. Just because you happen to be born in a geographical area collectively, you have no responsibility to that area to do what they say as long as you don't hurt them or their property. Now, there's certain, I think, things that are the right things to do like be nice to your neighbors or whatever, but uh, you don't have any obligation. Isn't that right? Look, I don't know. There are some people who think that if you legalize it, you regulate it, it'll cause less harm. They're living on the moon. If you legal, if you have stores for heroin, stores for crack, stores for... They had them... A hundred years ago, you fucking idiot. I I, I know this guy is, um, I feel bad because he's paralyzed, but how much does he know about the world and drugs and things like that? I'm sure, you know, he knows all about drug dealers and and people that use drugs and all about that shit, right? Or, you know, psychoactive, hallucinogenic drugs, which can alter your life for life, especially if you're a teenager. You know that's going to increase the use, and it will increase the use inevitably in young people. That that's their claim. It will increase use if it's illegal. And no, it won't. Look at what they're doing. It's been you're proving that with the the whole thing about synthetic fucking drugs is that no matter what, people are going to find something to get high, and usually it's it's worse for you. Like sniffing glue. There were people that sniffed glue when I was a teenager. I wasn't one of them. But it was whatever I can get to get high was people's attitudes. Now, the safer the item, the better. And it's not even about safety anyway. It's about the fact that you have the right, not the government, to put what you want in your body. But on top of that, it makes it a lot safer as well. So you don't get things like synthetic drugs. That's a creation of the government. Now, it's not a direct creation of the government. Well, I guess it could be, but I'm not saying that. I'm saying it's inadvertently a creation because of their policies. There's simply no getting around that. The one place where you want to do prevention is young people. Once you've got an addict, there are all kinds of arguments about what you do when you have an addict. Do you do maintenance with methadone? Even that isn't extremely effective. There really is nothing that's ultimately... You're talking about different drugs. You're jumping all over the place. You're talking about psychedelics. Then you're talking about methadone, which is used to treat heroin addicts. So, you know, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Extremely effective. You know, there is one thing. In Singapore, which has no drug addiction at all, zero. Well, Well, they hang people. The dealers. You know what they do with the users? Tell me. Mandatory drug rehab. If they're found with hard drugs, 22 months, they go for inpatient rehab. They cannot leave. Yeah, you force rehab on people that don't have a drug problem. And if you don't want to quit, you're not going to quit. So it makes no sense. That's taken away the marketplace. There's no market. There's nobody to sell to. 
That's how they solved it in Singapore because it was such an. It's putting it's putting them in jail is basically what it's doing. Intense problem coming over the causeway from Malaysia. Look, I I think what they what the uh, the Singapore uh, legal system does is something in extremity we wouldn't go to. We don't hang drug dealers. I don't think we should. I I'm against the death penalty even in more serious cases. But in a society where you don't have that, then you have to decide where you're going to intervene. And I think having them arrested, making it... You don't intervene, you fuck. ...illegal is absolutely essential. Because once these things are proliferating, and we will see in Colorado and in Washington state, we're going to have to study this over a few years. Is, is there an increase in the use of marijuana uh, among the underage who... There's been a decrease in people under age. We're not supposed to have access, but sure, there will. And, and you I, and I know are going to. And I, I think there shouldn't be, you know, an age limit, to be honest. Um, no. Do I think like eight year old kids should be doing drugs? No. But just like there's no alcohol limit, which I think alcohol is worse than any other drug. Um for the most part, I mean, there's all these psychedelics and all this fucked up shit. But I mean, then like cocaine or heroin or painkillers or whatever, then those drugs. Now there's drugs coming out now that at least what they're saying about them is looks really bad. But, you know, a lot of it, who knows what to believe. So um, I don't think there should be any age limit on it. And because kids are going to get drugs, too, if they want them. People are going to get these things. Or they're going to make them like they did with meth. They're going to create drugs that they can make them fucking sell themselves. It's better to know what's going on. And, you know, if you have people addicted to try to help them if you can but not the government through the government through the parents and family and if they need help there's functional drug addicts there's plenty of them depending on the drug get Absolutely. access the same way they get access to beer and alcohol of course is there going to be an increase in traffic accidents all of these things are worthy of study but you wouldn't should never contemplate the legalization of this hard stuff that can kill Smoking dope. Yeah, let the government make you own your body. You are listening to Nonpartisan Liberty for All Radio with your host, Dave Bourne. Call in at 702 470 7664 or Skype in. Username Nonpartisan Liberty for All. Nonpartisan Liberty for All dot com. Uh, I again apologize for that apologize for that whole rant there but it just it, it's just ridiculous it it really is to me um, i don't recommend that anybody go out and do heroin or do any of these uh synthetic drugs or most drugs for that matter i do support um kratom if you have pain or you know what I support Kratom if you need something, you know, a stimulant or something like that as well. And I do support painkillers, uh, op opiates or opioids for pain. Uh, I support uh, alcohol if you feel like having a drink to relax. I mean, it's all about what you want to do. And a lot of people have a lot of issues and a lot of problems and a lot of people self-medicate. The one of the problems I think is. Is there's the drugs that are coming from. Doctors and I'm not count, I'm not talking about the opioids i'm talking about like ssris and shit like that that are supposed to deal with these problems that those are the ones that it's all about the money and they have the patents and they come out with a new one every year and they make all this money and they still don't know really what it does 
because they haven't been around long enough. I think Prozac was the first major one, and that's been around, what, 30 years maybe, if that. And, you know, at least from a, a whole bunch of people, a mass quantity of users, maybe 20. So who knows how this is going to affect people after people have been taking them for our, our 50, 100 years. You don't. And that's okay to push on everybody. But because people look at drugs the way they look at them, they have this shit in their head. Um, the reason why so many people die is because they're buying them on the street and they're getting shit that is mixed with stuff. Uh, it's just, it's so many fucking things. And I've said it all before. And it it's just ignorant statements like that. Never mind anything else that this fuckhead said. The bottom line is is that you own yourself. It's your decision. Up until 1914, the government never got involved with what people put in their own bodies, as far as I know. Nor should they have. Now, they got involved in other things, and as I I have mentioned, and... I looked up another def- the definition of government again today because I posted a, a definition and they're all bad and they have of course the word control in it. Um, let me go to Facebook and see the post that I made um, on nonpartisan liberty for all on uh, facebook.com slash nonpartisan liberty for all. All my social media is at my website nonpartisan liberty for all. But um, I made some posts on some definitions from Merriam-Webster's dictionary, online dictionary. And government is the act or process of governing. You're not supposed to really use the definition in the, or the word in the definition, specifically authoritarian direction or control. Or author, it's not authoritarian, but it's author, authoritative direction or control. The continuous exercise of authority over and the performance of functions for a political unit rule, like ruling over somebody. I mean, these are not positive things. So, as I've said, that from the beginning, Government has a goal, and the U.S. government is no different, to totally take over and control every aspect of your life. Now, I think they started at a higher level of freedom than most governments, although most people don't know this, but if you look at China's government, Russia, and this is prior to, of course, Russia becoming communist, or while they were communist, um who else um north korea they all have the same type wording as like the bill of rights and stuff it, it's it's crazy because they don't give a shit it's just a piece of paper and that's what people don't get it's just a piece of paper and it still didn't give you a true freedom and liberty it gave you a level of freedom now, depending on who you were, obviously, because it didn't give women freedom, it didn't give black people freedom. But from that point until now, they've been working to take away or to meet their goal of controlling every aspect of your life. And as I've said before, they've done it in a way that they're able to give people a long enough rope, essentially, because you're obviously a slave of the government to a certain extent because you work for them. They claim ownership over you. They tell you what you can do, what you can't do. 
And I'm not talking about the natural laws or respecting other people's freedom. I'm talking about all these other things. They tell you you have to pay them a portion of your salary. They tell you, and never mind that, you know, all the taxes that they have. Um, so you work for them. They own your property because they can take your house away via you not paying property tax or Im- imminent domain. So they started at a certain level of freedom in certain areas, and in certain areas, actually, there was no freedom, like for women and black people. Uh, but from the beginning until now, they've been trying to achieve the goal through generations of controlling every aspect of everybody's lives. But because they give people like enough rope meaning they give them enough freedom for them not to rebel, but they still don't actually have freedom. They have the illusion of freedom. They're able to get away with all this shit. Plus, again, when you go back to they control the schools, they want to control your kids starting in nursery school, they're able to brainwash through media, And, of course, that's what I want to uh, talk about as well. Government pretty much controls at least the major uh, networks, if not, you know, a bunch of the cable ones as well. So when it comes to drugs, they demonize them to the fullest. So... Even though it may be, you know, things may have happened, they're going to present the worst stories. They're going to show the people that were affected mo- the, the, the most negatively by drugs. There are plenty of people that are functional drug users. And like I said, if it wasn't for things like the money or the worrying about getting arrested, which could ruin your life, or a lot of these things that are a result of it being illegal, you know, not knowing what you're getting, having to meet with drug dealers that could potentially be dangerous, that could rob you, Um, Again, I don't think the majority of drug dealers you have to worry about. Um, I think the majority of them are normal people. But then you have like the cartels and that's what they present. They want you to think that every drug dealer has a, you know, machine gun and is ready to gun down whoever comes to their house. And that's just not the case. But that's what they push. And and they have the police saying on these reality shows, they demonize the dealer. They tell them they're poisoning their neighborhood. Um, I think I have a quote from one of the shows, if I can find it. But I remember I was watching, uh, I think it was in the Northern California area. And, of course, the guy said, you know, they're coming into our my neighborhood and you know, putting these people in danger and they already have enough to deal with and they're ruining their lives. And it's like, no, if if you're going to say that, then you have to say Monsanto is ruining people's lives. Fast food joints are ruining people's lives. Um, anything that causes cancer, a lot of these companies, There's plenty of corporations. What about fucking all the banks and what they did to the housing via the housing market? And I'm sure people killed themselves over that because of all the money they lost. You're not going to hear about that. But they want to, we're in a society where everybody wants to put the blame on somebody else 
or something else. Nobody wants to take responsibility for their actions. So if I do drugs and I kill my, not kill myself, but I die or I, whatever bad happens to me because of me doing drugs or just if I do drugs in general, that is my choice and my decision and my uh, fault. It's not the responsibility of the person that sold them to me. And you have doctors, again, these SSRIs, man, we still don't know enough about them. You have doctors giving them out. You have pharmaceutical companies. The government, I think, are the ones that are pushing them because they're totally controlling the doctors. Doctors are scared to give out painkillers anymore, which are needed. And our th- the difference between painkillers and SSRIs, think about it. SSRIs you have to take for the rest of your life every day if you're depressed. And you mean to tell me there's not something you can take for like a couple months and then your depression will go away permanently. They haven't came up with that, right? Now, something like a painkiller, you can just take when you're in pain. Now, if you have chronic, really bad pain where you have to take it every day, that's different. But there are plenty of people that have pain off and on and can take something that they only take when they have that pain instead of something like an SSRI, which if you stop taking it, you get brain zaps, which are these and being somebody who's taken SSRIs before and stopped taking them just totally stopped. The withdrawal is actually pretty bad, but they want to act like it's not. But this whole concept of putting the blame on everybody, but the person that makes the decision is ridiculous. So when it comes to media, they only present drugs in a negative light. I'm not saying be positive about, you know, heroin. I don't think it's a good thing to do heroin. I I, I don't. However, I think it should be legal, and I think it would be a lot safer if it was on a shelf at a supermarket and it was d- developed by, I want to say respectable companies, but, you know, but companies that make, you know, Tylenol or make, you know, other things like that or pharmaceutical companies as well, as opposed to some fuckhead on the street who doesn't know what they're doing. And... If they would have never made drugs illegal in the first place, all of these things that exist now never would have existed. All these synthetic drugs, all these drugs that are actually really bad for you. Like I look at meth like it's really bad for you. I I, I don't really know, but I see in these shows when they're cooking it and the chemicals and breaking bad for one, but even the documentary type shows or reality type shows, I don't know if I call it a reality, but there's like a show called drugs Inc. Um, like the Nat, Nat geo shows and stuff like that. And you see all the chemicals that they're putting in, you know, something like cocaine and heroin that they don't want you to know is that, for the most part, they're natural. Now, they mix it with shit, dealers cut it, they put stuff in it. But if they were made by a company who actually gave you the pure drug and all they did was extract it from the plant, because that's really what they're supposed to do, is for cocaine from the coca leaf, they're extracting certain alkaloids 
that get you high or from heroin, the same thing, or help with pain, you know, like morphine and codeine, I believe are two of the alkaloids in, in the heroin poppies. And to me, you know, cocaine and heroin, because they're from plants and they're alkaloids from plants, aren't as bad as things like meth. That's all of these fucking chemicals that when they make it, they have to wear masks because they're using all of these chemicals. And there's the safety factor that if chemists were the ones extracting these drugs and worked for companies that were actually, you know, trying to make a profit by not killing their customers or doing, you know, damage to them if they can avoid it. Although there have been some pharmaceutical companies that have done that, um, have, you know, created drugs that have hurt people and things like that. But, you know, if Johnson and Johnson fucking made, you know, heroin and cocaine and I don't know who made it back, you know, when it was legal, um, I could probably find out, but they would be, they talked about on that clip, that Bill O'Reilly clip, and I, I'm probably going to go till um, 930, especially since I haven't been on in a couple of days, but they talked about that Bill O'Reilly clip about or in that Bill O'Reilly clip, they talked about minimizing risk or minimizing suffering. And in their eyes, how legalizing drugs does not minimize suffering. And to say that is such an asinine statement. Because right away, the fact that you know what you're getting and you're not getting something that is laced with shit that it shouldn't be. I mean, that alone adds safety. Now, not only that is... I would say that the majority of drug users, and this is just my opinion are functional drug users. I don't know that I've known anybody, although I haven't had a lot of, a lot of my brother's friends did drugs, but that I've known a a straight up drug addict before, but I've known a lot of people who have done drugs when I lived in Boston. So I believe that, the main problems of drug users are being able to get it, being able to afford it, and avoiding getting arrested. And that outside of that, the majority of people, now it depends on the drug, because again, there are a lot of drugs that are worse than others. But I think what would happen, I would hope, is that if all drugs were made legal, but not all of them were available at the store because some companies, say, wouldn't want to make a crystal meth, that people would instead do the drugs that were sold there like they do cocaine instead instead of buying crystal meth on the street although if there's not somebody who steps up and makes it that's when you could still have a criminal element in there so there would be somebody like some you know an internet company or something like that but that hopefully people would avoid those type of drugs and if they did drugs they do something similar that at least originated from a plant it doesn't mean because it originates from a plant that that makes it okay um i do think that something that occurs in nature is a little safer 
than something that is not. Although there's poisonous plants that if you eat them, they'll kill you. So you have that as well. But there's something about things growing in nature that to me, if all they're doing is extracting certain things out of them, makes it a lot safer than something where it's just you take a bunch of fucking chemicals and put them together and then smoke it. And it fucking, you know, I don't know what the fuck it does to you, but from what I've seen in, uh, you know, these shows and, and stuff, something like crystal meth, really seems like it's just all poisonous chemicals. So my point being is that hopefully people would stay to the safer drugs, you know, where I, not to say that anything's totally safe, but if they did heroin, you know, they wouldn't shoot it hopefully. And they'd, you know, stick to something like that or painkillers or cocaine and it would all be made by companies that weren't cutting it and mixing it with other shit that could possibly kill you. Because what I understand too is if you shoot heroin that's cut with certain things, at least this is what they were saying, Uh, drug dealers were saying on these, uh, you know, Nat Geo shows that it could uh, like clump up in their veins and kill them that way. I mean, there's so many um, dangers that are created by them not being made by people who know what they're doing. And these people know what they're doing to an extent but I'm talking about trained chemists and, you know, I'm sure they go out and hire some trained chemists, but you know, there'd be a much higher standard. So of course, not only that is jails, half the people are are gone at least. So the prison industrial complex would fall apart police they wouldn't have half the power that they have now i know they they try to get it another way like terrorism they'd claim terrorism um as a reason to search you or um violate your rights cuz you could be a terrorist but that's another thing. I did a whole show about how people that don't even do drugs, their rights get violated just because drugs are illegal. And they do. And people get killed, too. Plenty of people get killed. Again, I, I please, if you get a chance, read Radley Balco's book, and it will totally change the way you look at cops as well. Um, You know, there's so much that I want to communicate to people and that I want them to understand. And, you know, being on a radio show and trying to put all my thoughts together and them coming out the way I want and in a way that is... understandable and understandable in a way that actually affects you that you hear me say something and it makes you think and it and it, and it contributes to your opinion maybe it starts you down a certain path to more research um you know i try to do my best but You know, I'm not the greatest out there and, you know, I continue to improve 
And it's harder doing it by myself as well because I kind of feed off of having somebody else there. And, of course, it's more entertaining. I have to be entertaining at the same time. And it, it's hard to sit there by yourself and be entertaining when my main focus is getting the message out to you. But I got to do it in an entertaining way. And I try, and I know there's so many things I have to work on, but I have only ha- I only have so much time in the day, you know, where that's where at some point, you know, I hope that I can turn this into a full-time job for me so I can work on all that stuff. But I, again, want people to know that what I really want and what I really believe in and the the whole reason I do this is because I just want people to be free. Now, of course, I want to be free as well, but, you know, I could just say, fuck it. I'm not going to, you know, I'm going to do what I can to have the highest level of freedom possible and fuck everybody else. But I can't do that. I can't sit there and not speak about what I understand and what I know and what I research and all of this stuff. So going back to the the media, you also have TV shows, of course, the drug dealers. This is all over TV and it has been for a long time. And of course, the drug dealer always gets off, is never convicted, which is bullshit in reality. But in on TV, on on I'm talking about drama, uh, the drug dealers always get off. You know, the narcotics cops are the heroes. They have to break the law because they don't have enough uh, rights to catch the drug dealers without getting in trouble or violating the law, which is such bullshit. And, you know, that is just drum into people's heads. If you look on all these shows on the, you know, major networks, how many are cop shows? I mean, cop shows and doctor shows, you know, and, and doctors are another one who they don't work for the government, but they might as well. And the government is trying more and more to exercise their controls over doctors because your doctor is something that you know, depending on your age, um, you can't avoid. And if you have kids, you definitely can't avoid. I had a a former co-host who the doctor was asking his kid all these questions about him, about his parents. You know, they get involved in your life. They've been instructed now to do certain things. They keep all your records and databases so the government can access them. And that's in the bill, the the Obamacare bill or the Affordable Care Act, whatever you want to call it. Some people don't know that it's the same thing. So when it comes to something like Kratom, you think about all those things too, about the privacy that you don't have when you go to the doctor, about it being in a database about it possibly being held against you later as they collect all this data on you and you wanting to take care of something privately. So instead of going to a doctor, you go and buy Kratom. But they don't want you to have that ability. They don't want they want to force you. Like I said, at, at, a, at a rehab center, they do exactly the same thing. It's just you have to show up there. At least I've never been to a rehab center. I don't want people to think that because I haven't. But from the reality shows that I've seen, or they're not reality shows, but they're, you know, documentaries, I guess, or documentary type shows. I mean, that's how it is. And that's how I've heard people talk about it. The only difference is, well, the doctor has to supervise it. 
which they really don't. And then it gets documented. And then that's put with the rest of your data. But the media does so much to help influence the, you know, the the continued war on drugs. I'm not saying that they should go out and promote the use of drugs, but nobody talks about the truth. And again, the truth is that there are a lot of functional users. I don't think they should promote and tell people, you know, go and use drugs. But to talk about it being legal and all the positives of it being legal, yeah, you'll hear about that on independent media or maybe in some independent documentary or something like that. But you're not going to hear about it in mainstream government news. I mean, even that clip, and that was a local uh, local network news. They didn't even mention, and I'm talking about the clip where the lady said her son committed suicide. They're demonizing Kratom, saying that he killed himself because of that, because that's what she said, and left out a very important fact that he was on um, antidepressants, and he had a history of depression. And then this woman in the other, uh, I actually have the other clip. Let me play that other clip because I actually have to go to the bathroom real quick. (laughs) So let me play that other clip um, if I can find it. And I think I I have it here somewhere. Um, And when we come back, you know, I'll talk more about the legalization and um, some other things I want to talk talk about regarding uh, examples of synthetic drugs and some stuff I wanted to talk about regarding the the police. But again, if if you support kratom or cannabis or both, just have an open mind when it comes to supporting everything else as well. All drugs. And remember that the government telling you what you can put in your body, that's the definition of government ownership. It really is. Um, because if it's your body to choose what to do with, with it, and you could say, well, they're making a bad choice. So somebody has to stop them. So the government has to, um, stop them. It's up to the government to tell you, you can or cannot do something and the police have to come in and arrest you? Is that what should happen? Um, I know I have this clip. I just got to find the right one. So let me... um, This might take me a second, actually. I think it's this one. But if not, I'll have to stop it and find the right one. That's the Kratom controversy. As Palm Beach County looks to regulate Kratom, yeah, the this is the uh, investigators. This is the clip that actually talks about the original um, the suicide, and this was a while ago when this was actually uh, aired on the news, like a couple years. And I think this lady, you know, at the end of of this clip. And let me just make sure that it is her. Taking our results, the county commissioners who begin debating regulation next week. Their re- man did the most unnatural thing to her. One day, I got work to do. Yeah, it's her. So at the end of it, she, you know, she could have been one of the people who 
got involved in this, got groups together, and got to Congress. It's funny when you they listen to you when it has to do with something about them taking more control and more power over people. Then they'll listen to you if that's what you want them to do. Now, when it comes to more freedom and things like that, that's when they won't listen to you. But if it's about, you know, taking away freedoms and that's, it has happened throughout history. It happened with drinking and driving. Um, and which led to DUI checkpoints, which leads to other things. And, you know, which led, meaning it led to other checkpoints that are non DUI checkpoints that are unconstitutional, but of course that doesn't matter. So I'm going to play um, this clip. It's a short clip, and we'll be right back. Nonpartisan Liberty for All dot com. And legal or addictive and dangerous. That's the Kratom controversy. As Palm Beach County looks to regulate Kratom, the Contact 5 investigators do something no other media outlet in the country has done. We tested it. Katie Legrone with the results. You can buy it in powder, capsules, even liquid. It's part of the Kratom craze. Completely legal, naturally leafy, and deeply rooted. It's not highly addictive unless say it is. I say it's not. In controversy. This was like the devil drug. That's how he put it. Linda Motner blames Kratom for her son's death this summer. He needed that drug. Ian was 20 years old the July day he jumped off an overpass into traffic on I-95. I rushed home and I was coming home from West Palm and I was stuck in traffic. The traffic where my son was laying in the road. And after that, I don't remember because I went into shock. Ian Motner's autopsy report showed an unknown amount of what's called metregenine, the active ingredient in Kratom, also listed a number of antidepressants. Those drugs were working for him when he was clean. It wasn't until he picked up the Kratom. Linda believes it was Ian's addiction to Kratom that ultimately sent him over the edge. Why aren't we testing these things before they're they're tried on our kids like guinea pigs. The Contact 5 investigators decided to do just that. Right, here we go. Undercover and armed with cash, we went shopping, hitting a quick stop, a cigar bar, and two kava bars. Our Kratom loot included powder, capsules, and this liquid drink sold to us as half kava, half Kratom. With so much debate about Kratom in our area, it's time to find out what's in this stuff. We packed up our purchases and shipped our samples to NMS Labs in Pennsylvania, an accredited forensic lab specializing in identifying new drugs like Kratom. There's plenty of evidence that it's addictive. NMS National Director of Forensic Services, Dr. Barry Logan. Dr. Logan, what did you find? Products that are on sale down here. It, it, this is, I had to, to stop this real quick, and I played this when I did the show uh, on Kratom all together the the show i did um when i first found out that the dea was going to ban it they cannot tell from their test if it's addictive or not they want you to think that they can they are giving misinformation of course because again when it comes to government media and that's what they are they're going to present things in a way that the government wants them to that's beneficial to the government and obviously this is beneficial to the government getting it banned for a number of reasons and they cannot tell (laughs) by analyzing a drug it's not even a drug by analyzing a plant if it's addictive or not so him saying that is a bunch of shit in uh, South Florida, maybe Kratom or it may be something else, it may be nothing. Three out of our four samples tested positive for metrigenine. Oh, and I also just wanted to say, I mean, this whole thing, testing it on our kids like guinea pigs. Nobody's forcing them to take it, just like they're doing uh, in schools. What about all the kids that they're putting on all these drugs that because they don't fit in to a school setting and how do you expect a little kid you know most kids I would expect wouldn't so so the teacher doesn't have to deal with them 
They just want to put them on drugs. And if you don't listen, then, you know, you're, I mean, people have had their kids taken away by CPS for not putting their kids on Ritalin or other drugs. So what about all the drugging? You want to talk about drugging. What about all the drugging of kids and experimenting on kids with all these drugs? Yeah, they do clinical trials, which are, you know, barely anything with SSRIs and all these other drugs that they're giving kids and forcing them to take. This is not something that somebody is forced to take. This is something somebody chooses to take. There's plenty of research on it. There's plenty of research on everything now because you have the Internet. And and this bitch is talking about, you know, Crotum. And, you know, that's what people are worried about. What about all the drugging of all these fucking kids that uh, and the damage that that does giving six and seven and five year olds uh, all of this shit that they're giving them? Kratom's active compound, and one came back, no findings. The fourth product had indications that were small amounts there, but not uh, enough for us to be able to uh, confirm its presence. Which means what to a consumer who's looking for some kind of effect from it? So it definitely makes it more dangerous for the consumer uh, because from product to product... That is bullshit that it makes it more dangerous uh, because... The whole thing is they could have took all the leaves and think of, you know, blueberries and muffins and, you know, having the batter and one muffin didn't get hardly any blueberries. I mean, they're taking the plant and just crushing it up. And the the active ingredient that's in it, Maybe there wasn't a lot in that leaf or, or, you know, that they happen to give them. So they're manipulating this whole fucking thing. At least in this one, they admit that he was on antidepressants. But then this lady becomes a crusader who probably, you know, contacted her legislature and made, you know, uh, some kind of fucking group and did all this shit when she totally based this. Off of the fact, I I would say what it means is you kind of got ripped off because you didn't get enough, uh, the active ingredient that's in there that's supposed to have an effect on you, but that she blames it on this and then becomes some fucking, you know, uh, crusader based on not much, you know, it's not like. Her son OD'd on heroin. He committed suicide when he was on antidepressants. What does that fucking tell you, man? There are different amounts of the active drug in it. And so why is that significant? You could be getting nothing or you could be getting something very potent that could put you in the hospital. Kratom is unregulated. Kratom does not put you in the fucking hospital. I've taken a lot of it before. We'll just put it that way. And... It Kratom, the most it will do is make you sick. It's fucking, and that's where, like I said, it's like marijuana. You're not going to OD off of it. Um, I don't know what marijuana does if you have too much. I think if you eat too much, it might make you sick. So that's the, like I said earlier, the um, comparison to cannabis is that they're both plants that are totally natural they're not mixed with anything else and that they're not dangerous and you can't od off them the u.s leaving potency levels all over the map from batch to batch packet to packet or drink to drink i think it just underlines the fact that the consumer really never knows what it is they're uh they're buying and and they went into this already having their hypothesis, already having their conclusion, the reporters, that this is bad, we're going to show it's bad, and that's what our story is going to be about. And that's why they had the lady, you know, probably contacted them, and they said, okay, we're going to show, you know, they don't show the other side to it, they don't show, uh, and this is supposed to be the news, the actual, you know, not a show like mine where I give my opinion 
and I'm giving my opinion based on information and, and uh, truth, but it's a, you know, opinion based talk show. It's not where I'm saying I'm giving you the news of just what happened. And even that's biased because it's not just about what happens. It's, it, it's not just about how you cover it. It's what you cover. And a lot of people, you know, the stations or networks choose to co- not cover certain things on purpose or cover certain things on purpose. So bottom line, Dr. Logan, is this stuff dangerous? Yeah, yeah, it is. Who knows and he if doesn't the vendors know from or the shit. manufacturers are even testing their own products to see how much of the drug is in there. Stepping food off North Lake. It's going to use a slope, please. And Carolina Cigars in Delray Beach. Okay, but I don't want to be on okay. TV. Didn't care to talk about our results and their supply. There's nothing illegal about it. I just can't talk about it right okay. now, you know. At Kava Sutra in Lake Worth. We're with Channel 5. Where a month ago we purchased this Ziploc bag labeled KBS 15-year-old leaf kapow. We just wanted to talk about the kratom you guys are selling. Not only were we welcomed inside, but while our camera rolled, so did theirs. We purchased kratom here okay. and had it tested. Mm-hmm. And you know, they didn't even find any kratom in it. Really? Yeah. That's an interesting response to our kratom. Kava Sutra ultimately questioned our tests and our findings. It's taking advantage of our young people. Linda Motner now wants limits on kratom after she says the natural drug. He's not coming back, but I'm going to go to him did the most unnatural thing to her. One day, I got work to do. (laughs) Purple Lotus in West Palm Beach, where we bought the drink, also declined to speak with us. The owner said he felt the media's coverage of Kratom hasn't been fair by featuring Linda Motner. We're taking our results to county commissioners who begin debating regulation next week. Their reaction tomorrow at 6. Katie Legrone, WPTV News Channel 5. Nonpartisan liberty for all dot com. I shouldn't even end up done the i guess intro on that one being that i was kind of talking in between it and just playing the clip real quick but um i know they did say something about the depression but oh i probably missed that when i went to the bathroom um (laughs) that's why but yeah so her son was on um they didn't say what he was on see they didn't even do that because i wonder if he was on ssri's and what SSRIs he was on. Why don't they mention that? So that was the same lady from what I had played before. So bottom line, just to summarize, the bill is uh, HR 75, or sorry, 3537, Synthetic Drugs Control Act of 2016, if you want to look up that bill, because like I said, that could easily be used. And as far as what I've looked at up to this point is I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know how long it seems like they're still planning on banning it. It's just being delayed. And when they feel like it, they'll do it, which is pretty fucked up. It's also fucked up for the companies that their main product is Kratom, which again is all natural, is a plant, it's a leaf that is not mixed with anything else, and that's their livelihood. And you're going to give them first 30 days notice, and then you're going to tell them, you know, basically, well, when we feel like it, we'll ban it. And again, I believe if this bill passes, which all it has to do is pass the Senate and then be signed by the president, who claims, you know, of course, he wants less people in jail and all of this, you know, for uh, drugs. And I'm sure he'll sign this bill in two seconds. So he's full of shit. And um. I, 
I believe that they'll be able to use this bill if they don't schedule one um, Kratom. I, I think they'll be able to use the bill anyway. So I, I really don't think it matters if the bill passes. So, so far, it's only passed the House. Um, and regarding the media, I mean, that was just another perfect example. You know? And what about alcohol? They At least they mentioned alcohol in the Bill O'Reilly thing. But, you know, alcohol is so fucking bad. There's no question that there's no comparison between Kratom and alcohol. Now, there are drugs that you could say are as bad as alcohol or maybe some that are worse. You know, I don't know about crystal meth. I would say it seems like it's worse, but... Um, I'm just basing that off of, I've never done it. I don't know. I'm basing that off of it being made of all these chemicals, but you think about alcohol and not only what it can do to you physically, if you drink over years and years and cirrhosis of the liver, and if you ever get physically addicted and how fucked up that is to be physically addicted to alcohol is um i've never been physically addicted but it's i've seen and read about it and it's just it sounds horrible and not only that how fucking stupid you act and you cannot be a functioning alcoholic first of all you can drink on the weekends but that's about it you know, people can, you can socially be a social drinker and be fine. And I think that's a little of the difference where, you know, alcohol, you can have a couple drinks every night and be fine. But if you're an alcoholic, I mean, the way you act, um, I don't know how you could hold down a job or relationships or any of it, you know, not to mention how do you drive around and get around. And there's just so many things that alcohol does to your life. And if the definition of having a drug problem is how it affects your life, and that would be my definition, because what other, you know, definition is there? Or if it, if it affects your life or if it's so physically bad for you that the amount you're doing of a drug is going to physically kill you at some point, um, I would say that factors into it as well. But if besides that, it's really about does it, how it affects your life. So if it's affecting your life to the point, again, where you can't work, it fucks up your relationships, you're a mess. And it they portray same thing when it goes to things like media, portray people that use drugs as anybody that uses drugs as they're all drug addicts and, you know, fall down drunks and this and that. And, and you look at how in movies and TV shows and how they portray quote unquote, not even drug addicts, just drug users. They all have problems. Anybody who does a drug has uh, an issue with it. And, and that's why they talk about like the police will talk about, well, you know, for users really, you know, some of them will say this, that they should be going, you know, they're victims. They have a problem. They should be going to rehab and kind of makes it sound like they should have laws that any, any user should go to rehab because if you take a, a certain drug or any drug that you need to go to rehab, that you have a problem, not that you can be a functional drug user, which I believe that you can. And of course, the government wants to increase the war on drugs for so many reasons. 
you know, bigger budgets for the DEA and the police and more control, more police state, uh, more options for the CIA to make money off drugs. And of course, to make more money from drug busts because the DEA and the police who uh, bust people selling drugs are able to take a percentage of their assets, you know, asset forfeiture, and they make money off that. Well, it goes into their, you know, their budget and whatever. I don't know if they get, they might even get bonuses. And, you know, another example of using synthetic drugs. So there was a kid who got arrested and he had to take drug tests. And I think it was for like marijuana. So you know what he did? He took synthetic marijuana because they weren't testing for that. So he took, they made him essentially. Now, yes, he made the the decision, but they put him in a situation where in order for him, if he still wanted to get high, he had to use the synthetic drugs or else he would go to jail if he failed his drug test. So it's things like that where I'm not going to say that the government makes you do synthetic drugs, but they put you in a position where it makes it easier or it makes it more, uh, you have benefits of taking synthetic drugs like you can't get arrested for them at least you know the ones that aren't legal uh that are still legal and you know those type of things they're cheaper you can buy them at the store so it creates an environment that promotes the use of drugs that are worse for you than um, just doing the actual drug. And that environment is totally created by the government. So, I mean, that's really all I got to say about uh, drugs in general. I had some stuff about police, but um, I'll save that for another uh, time. So that's... Uh, all we have for tonight. Of course, I'd like to thank everybody for tuning in and um, sorry about the last uh, two nights where we kind of pushed the shows. Um, next Wednesday, we moved uh, Ken Shorjan, who comes on to talk about the economy uh, as well as geopolitics, we pushed him to next week because he was supposed to be on this week. So he'll he's not going to miss a week. We're just going to push him to next week as opposed to, you know, waiting uh, two weeks to have him come back on. So he'll be with us next Wednesday. Also, um, we will be back next week. Tuesday, well, next Monday with the Illumination Hour. Remember that every Monday, 7 o'clock Pacific, 10 o'clock Eastern, Ellen Stallone brings you the Illumination Hour, which is a great show, um, very entertaining, very creative, and she brings up so many different, uh, she covers so many different topics and the way in a unique way and it's really a, a a great show to have on the network so she'll be back on monday and of course i'll be back on tuesday but as i had mentioned we are 24 uh we are on now 24 7 i'm looking for different types of programming to put on uh when i'm not on live and when ellen's not on live so we've been playing uh, prior shows, but I'm also looking for other ideas as well, um, possibly playing 
uh, some videos and things like that. Uh, maybe some Larkin Rose stuff. Um, I don't believe he believes in intellectual property. So I don't think he, uh, he would have a problem, uh, with that. <laughs> so I thought of actually taking a bunch of Larkin Rose, uh, videos and, and playing, um, just looping those over a weekend or something like that, because he has a lot of important things to say that I think people need to hear. And he, I mean, I say a lot of the same things as I agree with, or we have a lot of the same views, um, but he just has a great way of uh, saying them and uses really good analogies when he does. So, so that's all for tonight. And again, I'll be back on Tuesday and Ellen will be back on Monday. So be sure to tune into that. And I hope everybody has a great weekend and thanks for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Take care. Listen to police officers' commands. Listen to what we tell you and just stop. The nation needs to realize that when we tell you to do something, do it.